You're listening to Love Talk Live with the relationship expert, Jamie Bronstein, only on L.A. Talk Radio. Hello and welcome to Love Talk Live. I'm your host, Jamie Bronstein, and today I have with me James Sebastiano and Anna Colbert. Welcome. Hi, Jamie. Thanks so much for having us. Thanks so much for doing the show. So these two people, along with a bunch of other people, which they'll be mentioning, put together a beautiful documentary called Chasing the Present. And I'm going to let them tell you all about it, but it's essentially about how to get past suffering and to deal with anxiety, etc. Correct? Yeah, in a nutshell, that's pretty okay. much it. <laughs> okay, well, obviously, there's so much more to get into about it, but I want to read to you guys a little bit about each person individually, and then we'll get into all of what we're going to be talking about today. Okay, so James Sebastiano Jr. is producer and main subject of Chasing the Present. He was suffering from debilitating panic attacks and anxiety and set off on a journey to find the root cause of his symptoms. Aside from producing this, James Sebastiano is a marketing expert, conscious entrepreneur, passionate about ethical and environmentally sustainable business, and has a BA in psychology from the University of Colorado. Anna Culver is also the producer of Chasing the Present. She produces social impact films. She's created content for NBC, Netflix, True TV, MTG, Apple, Cadillac, Dior, and many more. Her next feature is Ricky Lake's The Business of Birth Control out later this year. So as you can see, these people are very, very well, um, there's a lot of experience and you're very busy and Let's just start with, I want to know, how did this all come about? What, like, what was it that started this whole journey? Well, I think it's a different answer for me and for Anna, but similar in a lot of ways, which is why we connected and made this film together. But for me personally, you know, I, I had really bad anxiety from the ages of 15 until, you know, about 33, I'm 36 now. So at a certain point, you know, I just decided like, hey, I don't want to have this anymore. You know, how do I deal with this anxiety? How do I get rid of this suffering that I'm that I'm having so often? And my friend Mark Waters is an amazing director and cinematographer, and he um, he was in Bali, which is where I was living at the time. And we said, "Hey, man, that's we got to make a film together." And uh, he said, "Yeah, let's do it." About what? And we're like, "Well, actually, we don't know. We just want to make a film to help other people. We don't really know what it should be about." And then, um, you know, about a month into hanging out and brainstorming, we realized like, well, my anxiety was really bad. And why don't we do that? Why don't we travel around the world and try to understand our mental health things and things that we're suffering and, um, and just try to get to the root of it. And so we started kind of off on that journey, just we went to India and did a yoga teacher training, we went to Nepal and studied some meditation with nuns and monks. And we went around and we shot for a while and we realized like, okay, we're just like two people trying to, understand ourselves in shooting and now we have all this footage and we don't really have a story we don't really have a film and then that's how luckily we uh, got connected with Anna and she helped us pull all the pieces of the puzzle together and we connected and became really close friends and she told us her story and she was on a super similar um, path like like that I was and it just worked great and then we worked together for several years and 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 made chasing the present okay wonderful and so and Anna from your point of view like what was that like when you got to become part of this project well I was super excited because yeah as James mentioned you know about seven years ago like I hit an emotional rock bottom and I was miserable and unhappy and just like in unbearable despair as I felt and I almost didn't think life was worth living and uh so I just had to like find a way, I went on a search, like how do I become happy? Because I just couldn't live in the world how I felt anymore. So I went to therapy and I went to group therapy and I learned about meditation and I went to ashrams in India and I studied yoga, meditation eight hours a day and I started doing yoga and I started doing all these things that were just looking at my mental health. And I, I've been doing that ever since. So I was doing that for a few years and it was always my dream to make a film that relayed the messages that I learned because they basically saved my life and they made me happy and they made me grateful. And so when I met James and Mark and the rest of the team, I was so excited because they were like making my dream film. 
the film that I always wanted to make. And I was even happier when I got to join. And it was all very synchronistic how it all worked out, of course. I was gonna say like how aligned and beautifully that came together. It's like you guys were just destined to, to do this. Yeah, yeah. for sure. <laughs> so I've seen the film. It's incredible. Highly recommend anybody who's watching this to watch the film. So for people, most people who are watching this have not seen the film. Can you take us through what is it all about? Um, a little bit more specifically, where you're, who you talk to, the people in the film. There are amazing people that I, I saw you working with. That um, like the guy, I love that guy in New York. I think where you're just sitting, staring at him, kind of like not saying a lot. <laughs> yeah. Gary so, Weber. <laughs> I feel like he was very transformational, at least from a viewer's point of view. You want to start with him and just tell us about the the people in the film that were so um, helpful in your transformation. Um, <clears throat> yeah, that, the guy you're talking about is Gary Weber. And I mean, basically, in a nutshell, you know, like I said, we we were suffering and we wanted to understand it. So we we studied yoga, we studied meditation, we did plant medicines in uh, South America. Um, we did, we, we, and, and in addition to that, just anybody that we felt were was very inspiring. You know, that we read books that they've done, or we watched their talks or their podcasts or whatever. People really were kind of. Um, yeah, that influenced our life in a big way. We reached out to them and, you know, we have people like Russell Brand is in the film, Graham Hancock, Gary Weber, uh, Alex Gray, Sharon Salzberg, Rupert Spira, um, and, and lots of other people as well. I'd probably miss some names, but we just, you know, we um, went to the people that we found really inspiring on these topics and, and filmed with them and, and interviewed with them. Also, my therapist, Zelda Hall, She's in the film as well. She's been my therapist for over 10 years and we did like a real life therapy session as part of the film. And um, mm. and yeah, it, we're really, really grateful with the things that we've learned. And I don't wanna give away too much because I hope people yeah. will uh, will watch it, but it's really a an honest look at how to overcome mental health issues in our own lives and how to overcome anxiety and, and what it really means, you know? And it's just a really deep personal look at that. I like that you guys you've you've taken this collaborative approach, you know, because it, it's like things in life take a village. Like this film took a village, and it's it seems like it took a village of all these different ways of exploration and seeing like what vibed with you, what didn't. But it seems like most of it did, and it kind of all came together to help your your cultivate your healing altogether. Yeah, for sure. It definitely did. Because we didn't go into it. Like, you know, if you go in and you make a documentary, a lot of times you kind of have an idea of what's the beginning, what's the end. You make a schedule, you have a budget, you're going to go shoot here for this many days, you're going to shoot there for this many days, and you're going to talk to these exact people. We didn't really go into it that way. We went into it with, we just want to find answers. And we just let it kind of unfold along the way. And then at the end, when we had, you know, 200 hours plus of footage, we had to go through it and really think like, okay, what are the things that really helped us the most? What were the most important lessons for us in our lives that we learned while making this film? And how do we tie that all together in a way that hopefully makes sense and uh, hopefully that the that the resonate that the audience would would resonate with? What I liked most about the film was just how real it is and how genuine everybody involved in it seems to be so invested in it and just the way that you portrayed it it was just so it was real and it was moving and inspirational and so whoever did the editing well you guys did the, you actually just were yourself so thank you for being yourself and then also just that talent of the people that put it together in a story so anna is that part of what you were doing or do you want to speak more about how you like kind of put it all together and brought people in well, in, in that case, actually, our director is this insanely talented person who directed it, DP'd it, and edited it. And so, his name? Let's put it out there. Mark Waters. Mark Waters, yes. Thank you. And Mike. Mike Mike Beach also did uh, the editing. Mark and Mike did it together. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, how it works is, you know, they, they take all of it. They were sitting in the room. We had meetings, go through key points, and then they would just work like crazy for months or a month. And then they would say, hey, James, hey, Anna, we have a cut. And we would watch the draft, and then we would all make notes together and say, hey, maybe we should change this. Maybe we should change that. And then they would go back in the room for 
weeks on end, you know, like 12 hour days and edit and say, okay, what do you think about this? Here's what we did. And then you just go back and forth like that, you know, in the editing process. And, but and Anna was super helpful in all of this too, because, you know, it's not only just the editing is, 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 is rough still, you know, after the editing, we, you have to do the color grading and you have to find people to fix the sound. And, you know, we have an amazing composer, Oliver Arnold and Snorri Halgrimson, and they made a score just for this film and bringing all those people in. And it's so much work and it takes so much effort, way more than I ever imagined possible ever. And uh, Anna just was amazing in, in everything, but specifically in helping us put all the pieces of the puzzle together. Well, I know that Anna's very well connected because in a documentary that I'm working, I remember in our conversation, the first time I talked to you, you were like, I know this person, this person, you should reach out to this one, oh, this, I, this venue. And <laughs> so you're like a concierge. <laughs> <laughs> she's, she's, she's hooked up. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Good producer. Um, so what would you guys say, both of you guys, what was one of the things that you learned the most about yourself and maybe just about life from this experience, this journey? Uh, well, there's, I mean, there's so many things that we can talk about, but I say that my greatest takeaway is that my perception creates my reality and that my thoughts create my reality and that my thoughts are actually the root cause of my suffering. Because it's not like I, like most people think what I think is external things. If I get this, I'll be happier. Or this thing out there is making me unhappy. Um, things are just happening. And it's my choice how I relate to them. And, you know, I can always choose a negative thought or I can choose one of gratitude or trying to look at like the bright side or just be in acceptance and surrender. And also just not having so many expectations of what I think things should be. and if anything teaches you to surrender, not have expectations, making a film does because nothing, <laughs> nothing ever goes the way you want it to. Um, you just get it, but it turns out wonderful anyway. And it's, it all works out in the end. Well, I love what you're saying. Cause I always say that our outside experiences every reflection of our inner reality. It all does start from inside. And we do have a choice in every moment of how we're going to, how we're going to relate. You know, and and it's about getting out of the ego and tapping more into your heart. And so it sounds like I love that you've had these realizations and these revelations also. So, James, what about you? Yeah, I, I definitely connect with everything that you guys both just said. But <clears throat> for me, I think it's it's very similar. It's just like, you know, suffering with anxiety so long, I realized one of the main the main reason why I was suffering is because I was so identified with my mind. I was so identified with my thoughts. I thought that that's just what I was. You know, if, if all I thought was I'm just these thoughts, you know, everything that's going on in my mind, that's actually what I am. Then it sets me up to suffer. But when I started to realize like, wait a second, you know, through a meditation practice and through all these other things that, that we've done, that I have the ability to watch my thoughts. And if I have the ability to watch my thoughts, then wait a second, Maybe I'm something more. Maybe I'm something more than just these thoughts that are going on all day in my head. And it's, you know, re-identifying in, in a sense, disidentifying with the mind and the thoughts and re-identifying with what we truly really are. You know, and the more that I was able to connect in that space in myself, um, the less grip anxiety had over me. So I think that's really the thing. And like you, like you said, you know, you said it in a short, simple way from the mind to the heart. But yeah, for me, it's, it's also a logical thing. of just realizing like, well, I'm more than this body. I'm more than my thoughts. I'm more than my mind. And just really, really, really doing whatever we can to connect um, more often with our true nature. It's very healing. Yes. Yeah. You are not your mind. We are not our minds. And unfortunately people in this world, they, until they realize that they suffer. And what I always say, like with my clients, I say that, that our ego, like everything ego says is either a lie. Well, it's a lie and it's based in fear. So to be able to acknowledge that and to say, that's not, that's not me. That's for, it's trying to keep me safe. There's, you know, the ego is always trying to keep us safe. It's trying to keep us safe, but it's not me. The mm. real me is my soul and my heart. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Okay. So what would you say if you had to 
pretend you're like doing a commercial for the film, okay? Why should people watch this film? Um, <laughs> I don't think I could, I don't think I would ever make a commercial for the film, but it's, I think now more than ever, you know, with COVID and all the crazy times we're living in, I mean, mental health and, uh, you know, alcoholism and abuse and all the stuff that's happening that's not really being that spoken about over the last year that we've all been in our houses and dealing with COVID and lack of certainty and realizing that we're not in control, you know, I just think, you know, the film could be good for anybody who's, who's really suffering and having trouble with their mind or feeling depressed or anxious or really just feeling like they lost control of their life and they don't know where to go and they feel like there's no hope. I think it's, it's a real, um, it's an insight into, into some of those things. And to do the things that we talk about in the film don't cost much. You know, I'm very um, grateful and that I was fortunate enough to be able to travel around the world and make this movie and go to these different places. But to be able to meditate or to be able to just sit in silence and realize that what are our thoughts doesn't require a world journey. You know, we can't do a world journey right now. So the ability to just, yeah, just see it and resonate and, and feel. And um, I think if anybody's in any of those spots that it's definitely a good film to check out at least. I love that you're talking about control. I just did this podcast and they were asking, you know, how do you, like with the uncertainty, with the this and the unknown, um, and I gave them my, my advice or, or how to deal with it. But we did talk about how control is an illusion. So how do you, like, what have you learned about control and how have you personally learned to let go of that control and surrender? I mean, you go ahead, Anna. Okay. You just, uh, had, you just had a big lesson in this, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm learning le these lessons all the time and uh, I just have to keep reminding myself, it's more that, trying to get away from thinking things are good or bad, or I try to see like the universe is pushing me in one direction. I mean, even how I end, like things that seem bad or like I didn't get what I wanted that I was trying to control, like there's something pushing me towards something else and whether that'll probably, and it always ends up good and we're always fine. And, um, we can't really control many things. And even like how I ended up on this film, like I had another job and that job unexpectedly ended the exact three weeks that James and them were in New York. And I was able to like, just walk onto their project. And it was, you know, so I, I don't have that narrative. Like, oh my God, I didn't, you know, I don't have a job. Like I got like a better dream. Yeah, it's trusting in the universe that it has a plan and that it's gonna be this or something better. And that the universe gives us what we need, not necessarily what we want, but to trust in that, which takes practice. Yeah. <laughs> but living that way, trusting, like, I love that you had that experience. Like, that's the thing. Once people start having these experiences of whether, if, if it's a breakup, you know, like, oh my God, you're a breakup and you think it's the end of the world. But then that person that you do end up with, you see, well, it was wow, you know, if I had never, if I had stayed with the other person, I never would have known this level of love. So, I mean, this, it relates to all parts of it. Obviously I have to bring up relationships because this is love talk. I <laughs> feel free to um, relate any of this to your relationship <laughs> or feel free to tap into how this relates to relationships if you'd like to or not. Yeah, well, I mean, that for sure, I have to remind myself also, like, you know, I'm single and I would like to be in a relationship, but I just think that um, it will happen when the universe wants it to happen. And like, you know, I'm supposed to meet whoever I'm supposed to meet, like when they're ready and I'm ready and it's not gonna happen just because I wake up and say that I want this right now. Right. And like, or, who I, or I want this person or that person, like, you should, I just, I have zero control over it. <laughs> is all I can say that is just a fact and it's like it's frustrating because it's it's not like a job where even if you don't have control but you have more control because you can like work and make things happen it feels very out of your control but what we do have control over is doing this work the self-work the self-love all the work that 
that you guys are showing in this film that is out there and available for everybody to do so that you don't have to suffer. There's always another way, you know, you don't, you can live a life of peace. For sure. And it's like, um, that's the most important relationship, you know, is our relationship with ourselves, our relationship with our heart, our relationship with, um, awareness, consciousness, God, whatever word that you, you know, prefer to use, but it's like, how do we improve that relationship? How do we grow that relationship? And I'm a believer that just the more we work on that, the more everything else falls into place, you know, which is, I think, you know, what you're saying as well, that's what we have control over to be, well, it appears, you know, I don't know, we can have a whole talk about control and illusions and all that kind of stuff, but it appears that we have control over that you know, that we can wake up in the morning and decide that, yeah, today I want to meditate and do things closer and, and, and help to get closer to myself and help to build my relationship. Because from my experience, the more that I've done that, the more other relationships in my life improve, you know, yes. for sure, for sure. And speaking of all we bring in all that stuff to with our partners, you know, if we still have a whole bunch of stuff to deal with and a whole bunch of emotional baggage in our closets, we carry that stuff into the other relationships with us and start to think that it's our partner's fault when it's really our own fault because we didn't take the time to work on those things yet, blah, 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 blah. So, yeah. Yeah. And if you don't resolve that issue, it's going to show up in the next relationship. Forever and ever, over and over yeah. again. Okay. As you're talking, I just got this. Uh, I just remembered the, the part of the film with your dad. Oh, uh, yeah. How's he doing? Which, Is he good? Yeah, he's good. I'm actually in my uh, hometown right now. Um, in Florida, I, I, most of the time I live in Bali, but I got, uh, like, I guess I tested positive for COVID and I was sick for quite a while. Actually, it really, well, if, you know, I don't know, it, it affected me a lot. So I've been kind of stuck in Florida and I'm just now kind of recovering and getting better and Bali's closed. The borders are closed and, um, it's, I don't know, they were supposed to open on February 8th. So I had flights to leave February 10th, but I just found out a little while ago that it seems like they're not opening until February 28th now. So it looks like I'm going to stick around here until February 29th. I don't know uh, what's happening. Yeah. So, well, yeah. Universe of other well, my dad's good. <laughs> We're, I'm in his town and we see each other uh, a lot often. And he's the same guy that he's always been my whole life. And But we have a much better relationship now, you know, more open and, and <clears throat> more honest and more authentic. And um, I think another thing about, you know, relationships that I've learned and, and, and stuff like that is just, I can, I can see it with my relationship with my father. You know, it's not about really trying to change that other person, but it's really about just focusing on the change within ourselves. And if we really are into that and that's really happening, the change in the other relationships happens automatically, you know, because we have different expectations of how we want to be treated and we learn how to create boundaries for ourselves and with others. And it all just kind of overflows, you know, into, into every relationship that we have in our lives. You're, you're so amazing. Do you counsel people? Thank you. Are, you. are you a coach? No, but I actually, I'm just starting. I, I haven't started yet, but I, um, I have a degree in psychology and I'm actually working on my master's right now at Wake Forest University in counseling and, um, and psychology. So yeah, I think it's something that I'm going to get into eventually, step by step. Good. I mean, you, um, you're just going to kick ass. <laughs> you're just going to be such, such a great asset to people. You life. do that? You're a coach? Yeah, that's what I do. I'm a psychotherapist, Amazing. A relationship Amazing. coach. Cool. That's what I do. Really and cool. In, in LA or? In LA, yes. But I do Zoom yeah. sessions around the world, anybody who would like a session. Um, nice. It is the most rewarding job, you know, to, to help somebody change their life and to be there to witness it is just, it's so beautiful. So I'm so happy for you that you're going to go on that journey. Yeah, I just feel, I don't know, I never thought something like that. Like when I was younger, you know, my first round of college when I was in my 20s, I dropped out of psychology class. I hated it. But mm -hmm. after like going, you know, and I studied marketing and philosophy. And then after doing this film and meeting all these people and doing so much work on myself and stuff, it just kind of opened up. And 10 years of therapy, I was like, okay, I think I understand now, you know, after doing so much work. And I just thought like, wow, this is really cool. The stuff that I've learned really changed my life. And I'd love to be able to to share that with other people and to be able to be there for other people as well. So well, yeah, that's what I think is the next step. But let's see. Let me know at any me. point if you reach out, if you want, want any like, you know, advice on your journey to getting to where you want to go in terms of what it's like to be a therapist and things like that. Thank you so much.
You're welcome. So we have a few more minutes. What else do you guys want to say? Anything else that you want to say about the film that you would like to leave the viewers with? And also how to find the film, how to find you guys, etc. Anybody? I mean, I would just say, you know, if you are suffering and when you're in that space of extreme depression or despair, anxiety, um, to like there is hope. And, you know, we both, myself and James, were at a place where we didn't, we felt hopeless. And it, like, there is a way, you know, you just have to like look for yourself to make small changes and it is possible and it takes work and it's worth it. And you can, you can, you know, have a life full of joy and gratitude as well. I love it. It's so inspirational. You should probably be a therapist also. <laughs> <laughs> you can open up a group practice together. Yeah, we should. That'll be fun. <laughs> yeah, great. <laughs> yes, there's um, always a better way. It always gets better. Thank you. James, and what, what are your... I don't have any, I think I said, you know, uh, what I wanted to say, but I just am really grateful again for the opportunity to be able to make this project and, and bring it out there. And I guess one thing is just, you know, I realized like through talking through my issues with friends, with therapists, with different people in the film that it got better. So I think a lot of times we suffer and we don't want to talk about it. We feel like we're not good enough or there's something wrong with us or why do we feel this way? Or we're the only people in the world that feel the way that we do when we start to open up and share about it, we realize like, whoa, a lot of people are hurting. A lot of people are suffering. And, you know, the more we bring light into those dark spaces through talking and sharing and meditation and all these tools, the better it gets. And yeah, I think, you know, that's about it for me. And our film's available. You can check our website. It's chasingthepresent.com. Um, we have Chasing the Present Film on Instagram. Uh, my Instagram is james.sebastiano. So if anybody wants to reach out, I always respond and talk to everybody and stuff like that. So I'm there. And our films uh, on, on our website, you can send to the newsletter, but also show you where it shows you where the film's available. It's on uh, Vimeo, iTunes, Google Play, a whole bunch of other platforms. And in March or April, um, we're going to be on Gaia. We just signed a contract with them. And we're also in talks right now with Hulu and Netflix. So let's see what happens. And yeah. Let's see where we head. I just felt like that's a yes. Like that is so exciting. The Hulu Netflix, like it's going to happen. It's very yeah. Exciting. Let's see. It would be great if it did. And and we have good news today. Also, our director. I don't even know if you know yet, Anna, but Mark was nominated for a BAFTA for a short film. <gasps> no, which I is don't. cool. He's British, so it's like the British Oscar equivalent. Wow. And uh, wow. yeah, he was listed on top ten for that. So he was really really excited about that. I want to give him a little plug. <laughs> give him a congrats. And I know he was going to try to be here also, but he's he's doing lots of projects, though. So. Yeah, and he's sleeping. It's, it's like super late where he is right now. Um, and I just want to say one more thing about what you were saying, James, about the fact that um, I love that you were talking about how you're never alone, that you're mm -hmm. never alone in your suffering, and to to share how you're feeling with other people because then it also reminds you that you're that you you're not the only one suffering and also that people are around to help support you. Definitely. Definitely. Okay. So thank you guys so much. Thank you, Jamie. It was really nice to meet you. Today. It was it was so great. Um I'm wishing you guys so much luck with this film. I know that it's already impacted so many people's lives and it's going to continue. And um just thanks for doing this and Thank you everybody for joining us tonight. As always, you can reach me at therelationshipexpert.com and join us every week on Love Talk Live on LA Talk Radio. You're listening to Love Talk Live with the relationship expert, Jamie Bronstein, only on LA Talk Radio.